Can you consider a video with your opinion on how to maintain the high lysine diet for the people with herpes? There is so much contradicting info on which veggies are high in lysine ones and high seen ones and nuts and seeds and gelatin are the highest in arginine. Every time I eat very healthy for my digestion, it triggers promodrome syndrome, nausea, burping, uh, neck, lower back, nerve pain, fever, abdo pressure, which I always attributed to candida or SIBO, but over the years I think it's the herpes virus going active. I was following a high fiber plant-based diet with a little meat, but it's hard to get enough calories without nuts without the nuts or seeds or starches. I only weigh 100 pounds and have a high metabolic rate. I'm going to highlight a few things here. Um, any advice would be wonderful. I'm not crazy about eating meat and dairy, high lysine, and digestively feel much better eating more bananas, sweet potatoes, beans, lentils, rice, salads, but it's hard to keep balance with the herpes amino acid ratio in check. I always feel like I'm choosing between my herpes viral load or eating the way I feel I should. And can the virus cause strong flu-like symptoms? Um, flu-like system, hang on. And can the virus cause strong flu-like systems and even burping if you're in an arginine overload? I have all these questions. It seems so related to the BC when it happens. It goes on and on and on and on and on. I've been going uh, on years about this weird issue. And it seems to be getting much worse due to going more vegan. Cutting back on meat and dairy makes me feel so much better and more alkaline and energized, but I wonder if SIBO or parasites cause the burps and nausea when I eat the natural sugars and starches. Raising my stomach acid with apple cider vinegar and the digestive enzymes doesn't even touch the burping. Then it will go away randomly. Blah, 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 blah. What are you doing to yourself? You've got all these problems. Why are you so fixed on herpes, you know, and on this problem? One in three people have herpes, by the way. It's very common. But I don't get 30% of my videos being, you know, herpes-related videos. Most people tend to get on with their life and stop being anal and focused on this particular thing. You don't need to get too overly concerned about high arginine and uh, low, um, yeah, sorry, the low arginine and high lysine diet when it comes to herpes unless it's like seriously out of control. A long time ago, I used to work in a clinic with a, a gay doctor and I treated many patients uh, with STDs and, uh, but also with genital herpes. And I found some people had herpes so bad, like, you know, they could barely live, they could barely wear underclothing, they couldn't drive a car. You know, some people were at the point of wanting to commit suicide because their herpes was so bad. In those cases, I tend to get extremely fussy about the diet for particular reasons, but in most cases, I assume that your herpes is not to the point where you want to jump off a bridge, do something like that. It sounds like you've also got obsessions about food in general. Um, you only weigh 100 pounds, you know, you, you said, and you, you, you say this, I feel much better eating more bananas, sweet potatoes, beans, lentils. So you need to be careful with this, this kind of dietary approach because you're pigeonholing yourself, you're pushing yourself into a corner here, you're painting yourself into a corner that's going to create eating problems for you, significant eating problems. I think what concerns me about your email is your high metabolism and that, if, that you only weigh 50 kilos or 100 pounds. So it sounds also to me like you have a high degree of anxiety or stress or nervousness, and this will need to be really worked on more than anything. So one of the most important um, foods for you to eat would be the chill foods, the relaxing foods. Uh, no pun intended there, but I should have said chill pill. So what I'd like you to, to do is to see somebody really about you know, your lifestyle in general. Because I think there's more here than meets the eye. I think you're very um, food focused and obsessed, but I think you need to also stand back and look at the big picture and not just purely what you eat. I find that many people are like this when they go hardcore vegan, um, is that they're so focused on the food they tend to forget everything else in their life. In fact, it becomes a massive stress and an anxiety problem uh, eating like this. Some of the happiest people I know have got the shittiest diets, to be honest. It's true. And some of the sickest, unhappiest people I know have got the most amazing diets. So it's not always what you eat and exactly the type of foods you eat are going to really create good inner health. It's how you feel about your life, about your lifestyle, feel, how, how you feel about yourself in general. Um, 
I'm a bit concerned when I read emails like this. All this focus, focus, focus on arginine and lysine. Sure, if we have a look at arginine, they're all the high protein foods. If we look at, uh, uh, sorry, if we look at lysine, they're all the high protein foods. And we know that it, it, it inhibits viral replication if you eat more lysine, but so does vitamin C. So you need to take probably two or three grams of vitamin C per day. We have a diet rich in vitamin C to make lysine more effective in an anti-herpes uh, protocol. Arginine is nuts and chocolate. Those are the two core things. When you go vegan, it's often uh, a real challenge and you're often going to get your proteins from non-meat sources, which are nuts and many vegans snack on chocolate. So, and also a lot of carbs. So, and these foods can really aggravate herpes. But do you know what the biggest aggravator of herpes is? It's called stress. Stress really aggravates the herpes big time because it increases your cortisol. Okay, and that can induce immunosuppression and allow the herpes virus to replicate like wildfire. So I want you to think about stress, how you can counter it, rather than looking at um, you know, the arginine-lysine ratios, which I think are not, not really as important as what I can see under the covers here. All right, sorry about the long-winded reply, but I think that was called for. Thanks for the question.